What's up everyone, welcome back. Uh, today I'm gonna make a video and go through quickly probably the number one question I get asked on Instagram. Uh, that's how do I find the spots that I, that I go and how these spots that I fish. Um, they look super off the grid, super remote. So I'm gonna go ahead today and talk to you guys about how I build a trip. I'm gonna walk through exactly what I'm doing right now for a trip I'm taking this summer. It's like a two month road trip. So um, I have everything out because I've been doing this like every night and just kind of like building this trip. So figured today would be a good day. I've been getting this question so often. I was like, hey, I'm just gonna make a video on it. it seems like there's a lot of interest. I just walk through it real quickly uh, since I have everything out and just kind of touch on all this stuff. And hopefully it's uh, help somebody out. So that's what we're gonna do. First thing I do, uh, and this is not really a secret, I just reach out to people I know. So I'm just gonna call that local information, whether that's a fly shop or somebody in a network you know, somebody off of social media, whatever. Uh, you know, people are they're pretty friendly. So as long as you're, a, you know, you don't seem like an a-hole. Number one rule in fly fishing is don't be an a-hole. Um, people are, they're probably gonna help you out. Um, so I, I'm i am all for that. I reach out all the time. Somebody sends me a message and says, hey man, if you're in the area, you wanna, you know, hit me up. I'm probably gonna reply to them and ask them, hey, I'm all for uh, information. They don't always give you a stream, but sometimes they'll say, you don't wanna go here because last year we had a drought or last year uh, there was a fish kill or whatever. And if nothing else, if they can narrow down areas for me, I'm all for that. The other thing, fly shops. Fly shops build their business around re repeat customers, right? So they don't want to steer you uh, into a bad experience. They might not tell you where they're taking all their clients, and sometimes they're taking their clients to private water, but they're not going to say, they're not going to give you bogus information. I have I have met people uh, on random places, and I can tell you that sometimes people, they will send you on bogus trips. Fly shops won't do that. I can tell you I've gone on a hiking trail, uh, did like a half a day down in some spot in Colorado like last year. Didn't see a fish. But was hiking out and there's another crew hiking in. They were like, saw me with a flower. Like, what are you doing? I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm fishing. And they were like, there are no fish here. And I was like, well, some dude I met on another stream told me I should come here and fish. So pretty much, uh, guessing I was the butt of that joke. But uh, either way, I you know, you got to risk it for the biscuit, right? That's what they say. So that's what I did. Um, the other thing I do, once I figure out an area I'm going to go, and what I do for that was. Um, this is kind of the bread and butter of what I do. I usually pick a major drainage in an area. So a big blue line, um, and what happens is big blue lines are fed by small blue lines that are fed by tiny blue lines. So if you can find a major drainage, I use that as a, a safety net. There's always gonna be fishing there. Like there's probably pretty popular, lots of information on the, on the internet. Um, doesn't take a lot of research to figure out where those, those accesses are. So I can build that, you know, that into my, tri my trip and I'll go there and then from there, I start researching the smaller trips, looking at the four service roads, the hiking trails, and how do I get to those other spots? That's where I really find the places that are off the grid. Seems like a lot of the bigger tributaries, they attract a lot of attention, bigger fish, um, big hatches, uh, lots of fly shops and places to stay and eateries and things like that. So they, they just, it's like a magnet for people. Everybody gets kind of jammed into those places. I will use that, like I said, is that is the place to go back. If I go to a stream and it's not fishing well, I can go back at the end of the day to some public access. Probably gonna see somebody, but I'm gonna catch some fish and I'm happy because I'm catching fish. So the whole day, especially if you're on a trip in Colorado or anywhere else really, uh, you don't wanna spend a whole week like like without a, like not catching fish, right? I mean, you drove all the way out there, like I'm gonna catch fish. So sometimes these streams don't pan out. It's nice to have some place to fall back on. So when I start trying to find uh, access to the smaller trips, that's when I start looking at these uh, these atlases and forest service maps. So what I use this, this is really high level detail. Gives you like a forest service, major highways, intersections, things like that. Um, once I find an area I wanna go to, like a forest service, and I usually try to spend as much time as I can in the forest services because uh, it's public land. So I don't have to worry about like getting yelled at because going fishing and people yelling at you just sucks. So I don't like to do that. So I like to go to the forest. You know, there's tons of trails and places to get lost. So Pick up a uh, you know, national forest map, way more detailed. A lot of your good fly shops are gonna have these. Uh, and it's gonna give you like you know major roads, but it's also giving you like the four wheel drive, you know, trails, snowboat, snowmobile trails, things like that that you can hike in. Um, a lot of useful information. On the internet, like you know, Google Maps, uh, blogs, state pages, DNR sites, all that stuff, they're gonna give you tons of information. A lot of your uh, Chamber of Commerce and anything that's into tourism, they're gonna they're gonna want to encourage you to visit their you know their place or their their region. So they're gonna put information out there. You can always go to like so and so's Chamber of Commerce page and look through activities, 
hiking, fishing, camping, boating, whatever, state parks, and you can start pulling up maps like this. It gives you, you know, doesn't tell you what's in there, whatever, you gotta do a little bit more digging, and that's where the internet comes in. But, you know, get places like, you know, things like this. This was all off my Colorado trip. A lot of useful, useful information there. Um, yeah, talk about blogs for a second. Blogs, although they're not as useful, and people don't use them as often as anymore, there's a ton of, like, golden information back in the archives. There's some blogs have been around, they haven't posted in the last three years, but there might be 10 years of information. Um, and they don't always tell you exactly where you wanna, like the stream they were at. But a lot of times bloggers will give you like just nuggets of information. They'll say things like, I use trail number so-and-so and so to access blah, blah. And then you, you, know, you look through there or they'll say, hey, I was fishing with so-and-so and I met this guy so-and-so or this person and we, you know, we did this trip. So I will go to that person's blog and dig into there. Maybe they've mentioned a couple streams or they might have casually like tagged a photograph where it says, you know, outside so-and-so hamburger joint or something. Like little things like that, that just gives you a little bit of a geotag of where somebody's at. It can be super helpful because you start looking at those blue lines and little blue lines, big blue lines. And if I'm looking at a picture and the blue line looks like it's the size of a major river, there's only so many places that can be. You know, it takes a little bit of work, gotta look into it and dig a little bit, but can almost guarantee you the more effort you put into the dig, uh, the less people you're gonna find at that spot because people just tend to drop off. Like if you can find one spot and if you go a little bit further, a few less people are willing to make that, that journey with you. And then you go a little bit further and then like before you know it, like 25% of the, you know, of anybody who was interested in it, it's kind of like, I'm bored, they got distracted, something happened at home, like football games on or whatever. And they're kind of like, yeah, the reading is not that great and the pictures are blurry, so I'm not gonna, I don't wanna read anymore. So that's what I do with that. Um, so I talked about local knowledge, I talked about the maps. Uh, the other thing I use, um, it's been really, really helpful lately, and it's not something that's really fishing specific, but I use a lot of hiking and backpacking websites. Uh, the great thing about backpackers and bloggers, they wanna share, and they're super friendly, so they share everything. Um, they tell you where they start their hike at, they tell you how far they had to go before they cross the stream, they tell you if the stream was crossable, they tell you about wildlife they might have seen, which could be helpful if you're hiking by yourself, um, if you're in a camping, they might tell you about wildlife that came into their camp at night. I've read several blogs about, you know, animals like coming into their camp and scaring their dogs off or the dog scaring, you know, the bear off or whatever. So it's good to know if you're going to be back there in some of those wilderness areas, what you might run into. The other thing they do is they give, they put a lot of pictures. Like I said, they're, they're really friendly people. From the pictures, you can usually get an idea of what kind of scenery, what the topography is going to be of the stream. And you can, you can kind of get an idea of how fast the grading is. So, uh, you know, you go into pocket water and it's like super, super strong and super heavy water, you know, it might not be worth, you know, hiking in four or five miles to fish a stream that like basically is like straight, you know, straight down. Um, on the other side though, you see a lot of guys like, you know, they're filling up their water bottles. Um, you can kind of get an idea of like, you know, if it's a more kind of a relaxing kind of flow, like a, you know, kind of cool, like rippled system and deep plunge pools and things like that. Um, so the other good thing about backpacking websites and backpackers in general is they have to build their trips around water. So they need access to streams, they need access to lakes. Uh, the great thing about it is they usually don't have time to fish. So they're usually passing through a stream on their way to a destination, a campground or whatever, or an overnight spot. Um, so like if they're through hiking 20 miles over a weekend, the first eight to 10 miles, they might, they might fish where they're camping, but they're probably not fishing much of the stream in between. So you know, these trails, you can use those to get into uh, the stream, maybe where they're filling up their water bottles or whatnot. And then you might have a whole stream to yourself for the whole day because uh, you might see people on the trail, but they don't have time to stop and fish, which is great. So a lot of times I've definitely found myself on a stream um, and past hikers and backpackers, but nobody was actually fishing. Um, hike down, base camp in the middle of some place where, uh, you know, they're gonna keep going and you have an entire like two or three miles of river to yourself. Super cool, it's been working for me. Okay, so I'm gonna end this video with just a, uh, if you're using social media to find your spots, you're probably gonna be disappointed. I think I've said that before, but uh, YouTube and Instagram, I use those to remove streams. Um, if I find it on there, if it has more than like six or seven videos, I just consider it too much traffic. Um, and if I can find it that easily, anybody else who's planning a trip can probably find that that easily as well. And it's probably not worth spending a week on. Now I might use it as a, a base of operations to build a trip around, but I'm not gonna plan on fishing that one stream or that one area for the entire week. Just how I do it, but I wanted to throw that out there. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, didn't have an itinerary for this, so I probably left out something somewhere. 
Um, try to talk about the maps, try to talk about how I basically built my system. But if you have any questions, drop those below and I'll make sure I give you, uh, try to give a little bit more detailed information I can type out and think a little bit clearer whenever I'm not trying to talk to the camera and get intimidated by the GoPro. But uh, <laughs> that's pretty much all I got. I appreciate you watching the video. Like I said, got questions, leave those and uh, I'll uh, get to those as quickly as I can. Appreciate you. Thanks everyone.